Hello, this is Mom Spark Live. Welcome, everyone. Today we have a special show, and you may have noticed that we're going live on Wednesday, not Thursday. So I appreciate you rearranging your schedule for us. And um, if you are new here, my name is Amy Belgartz, and I am the lead blogger and creator of MomSpark.com. It's a .com now, by the way. You can also get there by MomSpark.net. And um, every week we host a show, Mom Spark Live, which is what we're doing today, and we talk about a different topic every week. And every week, Desiree Fawn joins me, and she's a longtime blogger for MomSpark.com, and my weekly show co-host, Desiree. Hi. Hello. How you doing today? Good. Needing my fourth cup of coffee. Oh yeah, one of those <laughs> days, huh? <laughs> a okay. Bit. Yeah, and. And so today we have a very special show, and I apologize, it's kind of dark in here because we're having a very rainy overcast day, so I can't get my lighting just right. Um, but we have a very special show today. We're going to be discussing smart ways to feed our children nutritious foods, which if your kids are anything like mine, and I'm sure yours are the same way, um, that could be a challenge some of the time. So. Uh, joining us today is Stacy Parla, who is here on behalf of Puritan's Pride, which is also our sponsor for the hour. Um, and if you're not familiar with Puritan's Pride, um, their mission over the last 40 years is to make high-quality nutritional supplements available at the best value. And if you've been following me on Mom's Park for a while, you probably know that I've been writing for Puritan's Pride. Puritan's Pride's blog, which is Healthy Perspectives, for the last year or so. And so I cover various topics from women's topics to healthy families and, and uh, things like that. So um, Stacy, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, great to be Hi. here. Hi. And you're a mom as well, correct? Yes, I am. I have okay. a three-year-old. Oh, oh, yes. And that's a, that's a very picky age. Yes, so, it is. Um, that's <laughs> really a challenge. Okay, awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to having this conversation, and um, you know, I, I'm sure there's a lot of moms out there that can relate. And I'm going to be following our um, cha challenge channels. I cannot talk today on social media so that you can ask questions during the conversation. So there's three ways you can do that. You can leave a comment on the Google Plus event wall page where we are showing this live video right now. And you can leave it on the page, or you can leave it in the widget in the video, which has a nice little Q&A widget that you could type in your question so everyone can see your question. Or you can tweet at MomSparkLive using that hashtag, MomSparkLive, and we will address it during the show. Um, we had a few questions submitted before the show, and um, we all thought they were really good. So we're going to start off with those. So as you're watching, you you uh, have a question, and, and Desiree, if you see a question before I do, just pop in and, and let me know, and we'll we'll try to do our best to help because we've all been through this with our with our children. So mm -hmm. let me get to question number one: What challenges do you face when it comes to feeding your children nutritious foods? And so I thought we could just kind of go around the room, so to speak, and maybe share what is our biggest challenges. And they're probably very similar to what other parents are experiencing out there. For me, um, and I have, I have two boys, one that is more excited about eating fruits and vegetables than the other one. My older one has never been excited about eating green, anything green, anything green. But yet my youngest is more adventurous and likes to try new foods. He loves fruits and vegetables. He will eat a salad, and um, he's six. But my teenager, I have the hardest time getting those fruits and vegetables into his diet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he'd, he'd rather go for like the, um, the the bag of salty snacks or like some snack cakes or something like that, you know. Um, so I don't know. Do you guys have the same problems? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, my problem really isn't so much my her daily meals, my daughter, because I'm lucky that she does love vegetables and fruits and always has. My challenge is when I'm not with her. She is in daycare all throughout the day. They have birthday parties. They bring in foods. They bring in candy. They give um, 
favor bags for the kids to take home filled with candy. We go to birthday parties almost every weekend. There's donuts, there's cake, there's cotton candy. It's You can't tell them no when everybody around them is eating all the junk. So it's just really important to try to establish that these are sometimes foods and that the other foods help you grow and get healthy. And it's really difficult sometimes, though, when you're faced with it every single time you go out somewhere. Yeah, that, that's a really good point, uh, and, and something that I know a lot of parents struggle with, especially if, they're, if their kids have like certain allergies to food and things like that. Mm -hmm. When you go to someone else's house or a party, you know, how, how do you, I, I guess, you know, like you said, that you just tell, tell your children this is kind of a once, you know, every once in a while type of thing, mm -hmm. and of course you have to make sure that those foods are even safe for your child to be eating. Um, mm -hmm. But what about you, Desiree? Do you have any issues like that with Gretchen, or is she pretty versatile in her, her snacking? She's, she's a really good eater. She knows that mom would prefer her to have fruits and vegetables and mm -hmm. things like that. She knows that um, she has to pick some kind of fruit or veggie to go with her breakfast if she's having just cereal or toast or something in, her mor in the morning. Um, she knows the things that I would like her to eat and the things that I would not like her to eat. And... Um, we, it, the birthday party thing, this is the first year she's in school, so there's birthday parties all the time. It's like a mm -hmm. never-ending. Um, yep. But we happen to also have a lot of friends whose kids are either gluten-sensitive or vegan or something like that. So a lot of those treats are still treats. They're still sugary, but they're um, slightly less on the intense <laughs> bad food scale. Um, so right. I don't feel quite as guilty letting her have, you know, the vegan cupcake right. when I know that it doesn't have a ton of junk in it. Yeah. Um, but she also knows what makes her feel good and what doesn't. Um, I've been taking her to a fast food restaurant that has a play place because I will sit there um, and work and she can play and it's the perfect yeah. combination. Yeah. I feel like every restaurant should have this, but I never eat the food there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she was with a friend and the friend ordered one of the kids meals and yeah. I thought, okay, if you'd really like to try it, you can try it. And she felt sick the entire afternoon, felt absolutely miserable. And I said to her, that's why I usually don't let you have. And she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Mom. I won't ask for that again. And she was very <laughs> mellow yeah. about it. She was like, oh, that did make me feel sick. So I think, you know, yeah, not yeah. letting them have the junk so that they know it makes them sick, but it's there's sort of a balance there. Like, now she's learned on her own that that yeah. doesn't make her feel very good. So I think it's an important lesson to learn, for sure, that they know the foods that make their body feel good. Right, right. That's a, that's a really good point. Um, Okay, um, let's go to our next question, which is, what are some good ideas for nutritious after-school snacks? And, you know, if you're, uh, your, your kids are like mine, they are, like, so starving when I pick them up from school. I mean, it's like they didn't even eat lunch or something. They are, like, famished, yeah. especially my teenager. My goodness, he's, like, and he eats, like, a, the size of, like, a man. Um, <laughs> but... You know, and of course, you know, if, if I have anything that's like, you know, uh, chips or something like that, like laying, laying around the house, that would be like the first thing that he wants to go to, to, to eat. And so I guess, you know, what are some good ideas for getting him to not do that? And I think one thing would be to not have a whole lot of those things h hanging around the house, you know? Yeah. I mean, I shouldn't buy, you know, a big bag of potato chips if I don't want my kids to eat them. Like, yeah. I mean... Even though I might want to to sneak some in myself, it's still it doesn't it's not a good you know um, uh, model to set for them. And if it's not around, they have no other choice but to eat what's around. And you know when you think about it, an, an apple is just as easy to eat as a bag of chips. You know you just pick yeah. it up and eat it. Um, I found that if I have more fruit just laying on the counter like in a bowl, they're more likely to grab it. Even yeah. and I used to like refrigerate a lot of my fruit, but then I realized I didn't have to do that. I don't need mm -hmm. to do that. And so I just leave it on the counter, and they're more likely to get it off the counter than they are to go open the refrigerator and then get it. Yeah. So I don't know if it's like a psychological thing, but when they see it, they're more likely to grab it and eat it. Well, and it is just having that choice there. I mean, there is a bowl of, uh, like, Easter chocolate on the counter. So I keep eating it when I walk by, but I know yeah. that if it was grapes or something, I would just eat that too. <laughs> 
I'm blaming yeah, my partner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but. Well, yeah, the other thing is I would kind of section off like um, grapes or something and put them in like a little baggie. So that it's an easy little thing to take yep. and go, you like sit if they're watching a movie or something or doing homework. It's a little little portion that yeah. they could do, and and so I I don't know. Those things have worked for me. What about you, Stacy? Yeah, I was going to agree that if you give them the convenience, you make it seem different than what they're bored with. Uh, making making them excited about fruits and vegetables, cutting in a different way. I know for my daughter, one week she wants me to cut an apple into sticks. The following week, she wants me to cut it into rings, and it really makes a difference. Even getting the carrots that you have the baby carrots, you have the sliced the julienne carrots, you have the waffle cut carrots. There's so many different things to make them just a little bit more excited about what they're doing. Change what they can dip it into, whether it's a yogurt dressing or um, just something that's nutritious and yet is tasty and, and makes them feel like they're doing something aside just eating something healthy, which after a while they want to feel like they're eating something that's not good for them. <laughs> but <laughs> you know how yeah. it is. But certainly yeah. keeping it exciting, um, changing up, maybe just doing broccoli spears and cauliflower spears one day, having it available to dip. Or I find the dips are really big in my house. Um, and there's lots of different things to do. You could do cheese and crackers. You could do peanut butter and crackers if they like that. Or soy butter is very good. Uh, there's lots of different options out there that you don't have to always have them, you know, going to the fruit bowl if that's what they're bored with. Although I love the fruit bowl. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but freezing grapes is another great thing to do, mm -hmm. throwing them in the yeah. freezer. They love that. Um, even making juice pops, and they have something like that where it's made from fresh juice or pureed juice. Uh, th there's so many wonderful ideas out there that keep them excited and keep them interested in eating it, and whether they know it's healthy or not, as long as they're enjoying it, that's all that really matters. Yeah, and I, I found that if, if kids are part of the process of maybe selecting those foods from the grocery store or, like you said, making say you made juice pops with them, <laughs> Mm -hmm. And they're more likely to try it, even if it's something they've never tasted before, if they're uh, involved with the process of creating it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I once you. went on a... Uh, I'm sorry, Desiree. That's okay. I once went on a, um, a, a trip where I went to a farm where you got to pick your own vegetables and then prepare it at the end of the day. Oh, wow. And um, I don't know how many farms do that. This was in California. Um, but that would be something great to do with your kids, especially if they've never tried those like we, we picked kale and things like that that your, maybe your kids have never tried, but if they pick it and then they cook it and they put their own spices in and things like that, they're more likely to get excited about trying it because they helped create it and they're not just seeing it on a plate. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. What were you going to say, Desiree? I was going to say, and don't be afraid to give your kids foods that you think they might not like because I run into... Um, I work as a doula as well, and I sort of follow my clients through, and I'll, you know, once they're weaning their kids and they're trying new foods, and they're so nervous to try foods that they think they won't like, and then you end up with these five-year-olds who eat plain everything, yeah. nothing, you know, and everything, it's just, yeah. just feed it to them. If they don't like it, they won't eat it, but yeah. don't stop trying to feed them nutritious foods like that because right. you think they won't. Gretchen is much more likely to grab an avocado with mm -hmm. salt and pepper than pretty much anything else because she's always had stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and she, I think, has a, like a wider palate than a lot of my friends' kids have because I've just, I've never made a big yeah. deal of it. It's like, well, this is what we're eating. Try it. Right. And Not she knows that there's a rule of no matter what it is, you have to try it. If you yeah. eat it, I, fine. <laughs> we won't have it today, but exactly. we're going to make you try it again, <laughs> you know. And right. some things that she used to not like at all, she loves now. So it's right. not being afraid to keep keep uh, keep letting them try it. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so um, Desiree, you brought up earlier about um, fast food. And so our next question is, when fast food is the only option, which uh, foods should you order for your children? And that's that could be really tricky, and it depends on, of course, the restaurant you're going to, because more fast food restaurants are becoming more conscious about... Um, what they what they have available as far as as uh, help, you know more fruits and vegetables with kids meals and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it, when you guys are in that situation where like you're say you're on the road and you have to like go through a fast food place, um, what would you order? Like what are the safe things that you think are or the best things available to to give your children? I guess it well, depends on the place, but I would do 
Um, <clears throat> if there's a whole wheat option, go for that. If there's a more veggies option, go for that. Um, even the, I feel like I shouldn't say brand name, so even the particular place that I went to before has a <laughs> substitution for their fries and things like that that you can add into the meal. Um, so it's, I mean, it's nice to see fast food places making an effort yes. in that direction. It's not just a burger and fries and soda and enjoy. Yes, yes. Um, yes. So, I mean, it's, at least there's more options now than there were even like five years ago, so. Oh, yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, I don't think there were any options for fruit or vegetables. Oh, yeah, no. Not a fast food place at all. I mean, milk was probably the only thing that was somewhat wholesome, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I don't know. What about you, Stacy? Do you ever have those issues where you're bit just busy and you just run through a, a fast food restaurant and then you don't know what to get when you're there? Yeah, and I think that salads are always such a great option, and so many places are carrying salads now. So. It's great that if you have that, you put it in front of your kid. Again, you make it interesting. Maybe it's a different kind of dressing that the kids never had before to sort of make it seem a little bit tastier. Um, and it can, the whole thing about something being sometimes food, there's nothing wrong with getting the small kid-sized fries on the side if that's what they like or whatever, a small, small version of something that's not so great as long as the rest of the meal really is packed with a good protein like a grilled chicken, uh, the fresh vegetables on a salad, even something like the grape tomatoes that come with the salad, dip that separately in a dressing or the cucumber, make it interesting and make it sound, you know, as long as they don't know that the rest of the menu is so junky and salty and fatty, then they don't really miss it. So it, it's yeah. really important to, you know, give them that treat once in a while on the side as part of the bigger, more nutritious meal. Yeah, and I, I think uh, Desiree brought up a good point earlier in that even if your kids have tried something in the past that they didn't like, Mm -hmm. Keep reintroducing that, even if it is, you know, going through the fast food line and, hey, the, sorry, these are your only options and we're not going to go for the fries this time. We're going to try apples or whatever. Because I have noticed with my pickier eater, my teen, that as he gets older, he'll try something and he's totally fine with it now. He's, you know, he'll surprise me all yeah. the time. I mean, it's very slow with him, though, because that's mm -hmm. just his personality. But we'll go to um, a restaurant, and he'll be eating, like, green beans or something. And I'm like, when did you start eating green beans? <laughs> it's green. Why are you eating it, you know? Um, but, and, you know, I have found that the less pressure I put on him, but maybe just offer it and not try to, I would never try to force him to do it. Um, the more he open he is to like wanting to try it because he sees yeah. everyone else eating it, you know, so yeah. it must not be that bad. And if it's all mixed in with the same flavor as like the carrots that he likes, it must not taste too bad. Right. You know. So um, I think I think another good option though, as far as having an emergency backup, is always having something on you, whether it's in the car, something non-perishable, whether it's raisins, nuts, um, anything that you can bring into the restaurant with you, or if you're in the car eating, however you have it, um, that you have other options available. You could have yeah. whole wheat sticks, you could have you know pretzels and things like that, um, so that you have another option, so that your kid yeah. isn't starving. If you say the only thing you can get is a salad and yeah. that's what they're eating and they're kind of bummed out, yeah. you can still give them something else that's also healthy and, and you can complete your meal in that way as well. Right, right. Um, I always have peanut butter crackers on me mm -hmm. um, when we're going to be out for a while because at least they're getting some kind of protein from the peanut butter and it seems to fill them up if, if we're like we're kind of in between meals, you know. that's mm -hmm. When I travel, that's what I, oh, I always bring peanut butter crackers. I always bring them. <laughs> I always have some sort of food in my purse, like yeah, some yes. kind of that's a mom thing. or an apple floating around somewhere. Yeah, that's a, that's a mom thing. We have we have yeah. everything. We're like Mary Poppins. We have everything in our <laughs> or purse. in the center console of my car, which only works yeah. in some seasons. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. there's usually something in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same here. Awesome. Okay. Well, um, again, if you're watching this and you maybe have some some struggles or or anything and you want us to maybe talk about it, please feel free to leave a question in our video here um, that, hit by hitting the Q&A or on the wall Google Plus or tweet us at MomSpark Live. We're kind of tweeting some quotes and um, some of the questions on Twitter as well. Okay, let's go to our next question which is how can you make eating nutritious foods fun? And I think we discussed that a little bit earlier um, Stacy, you brought up how you can cut 
foods into fun shapes. Absolutely. I don't know why the shape makes such a difference for the kid, but it really it does. does. It does. Yeah. You know, those cookie cutters are like genius because you can cut cheese and bread and you've seen those bento boxes lunches that are, I mean, there are some fancy ideas out yeah. there of fun ways that you get your kids to eat. You know, putting your fruit fruit on a skewer or something, you know. Absolutely. I mean, um, all those things, just, it's a, it's a psychological thing. They just, it's just fun and you want to jump in and eat it. What, what have you guys done to make, you know, um, snacks fun or, or lunches fun for your kids? Well, you had said earlier, Amy, about getting them involved in the cooking process, and I think that's a huge, huge factor, getting them to pick out what they like in the supermarket, maybe having a rainbow shopping trip and picking out all different colors of the rainbow. Um, certainly, you know, whether you're baking or roasting vegetables or in the cutting process in a safe way, anything that gets them involved in touching the food and making the food definitely makes a difference. I know so with, with, with also with my daughter, uh, she's very much into the different characters, whether it's the princesses, anything like that, and buying her uh, bowls and plates and things that uh, have the characters on them, so you play the game of eating until you find out who's at the bottom of the bowl, and, and just making it anything to get them to eat sometimes yeah, <laughs> is exactly, all that matters. Yeah. Um, you know, we try not to do the television and things along those lines so that they're actually aware of what they're eating and enjoying what they're eating. We talk about what she's eating. We, we try to make it an experience so that when she is with her friends and she's, they see her eating great foods, then they eat the foods. It's all a domino effect in many ways. Right, right, right. I totally agree. What about you, Gretchen? I mean, Gretchen. Why'd you call me Gretchen? Everyone does. The mom I, does. Say, <laughs> I am just Gretchen to everyone. I meant to say, what about Gretchen? Not you, Gretchen. <laughs> um, lately, I've been making faces out of our dinner, and I was oh, posting them on Instagram, yeah. actually. Oh, that's, a, that's um, such a great idea. I love that. And we did, like, I mean, we dinner doesn't always look like a traditional dinner at my house. It's just sort of all over the place. Um, so we right. did like strawberries and peppers and eggs because she loves eggs and I love anything that's of that big boost of protein. Mm -hmm. um, so eggs are included with just about every meal. You know, I just yeah. toss one in. Yeah. yeah. We did just this face of all these different nutritious foods that she loves. And it was a weird combination to eat all together. I think it had like a whole wheat English muffin ears. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but it was fun, and she thought oh, okay. it was hilarious. So that works for me. Now she asks for dinner face every night. So. Dinner face. I love it. <laughs> See, it's just something dinner like... Face. It's such a simple idea, yeah. But it just it makes it it makes it so much fun, you know. Yeah. And I, I just love that. It's just mm -hmm. it's just awesome. Okay, cool. Well, so far we don't have any questions on the wall. Um, so I'm gonna move on. Um, I think we had one more one more question, and then maybe we could just you know chat a little. I have bit. a question that I can oh. pop in here. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, I guess, uh, Stacy, your little one, well, it's going to daycare, so not yeah. quite school, but do you send a lunch, or do they eat lunch there? They eat lunch there. Okay. Because um, I was going to, maybe we could talk a little bit about school lunches and mm -hmm. how you make sure they're eating everything, because that's, I mean, you can send yes. the best food in the world, but yeah. does it come home at the end of the day, or yeah. Amy, yeah. you know, do you have any tips, especially for Charlie? Um, yeah, so Charlie kind of flip-flops in between wanting to take his lunch and then wanting to eat at school. And his school is pretty good about having um, everything available that I feel comfortable with, um, a little bit from each Oh, they do a first. lunch at the school? They do a lunch at school, yeah. So um, he can, he, but he can also take his lunch. So right. um, he likes to mix it up because I think he gets kind of bored with the same things, like taking mm -hmm. the same things and like at, at school – it's just for some reason more exciting than when I send him yeah. a lot because I'm not one of those like master bento lunch moms. <laughs> yeah. I, haven't, I don't know. Like I need to master to make it fun. But um, it's good if you know someone at the school that works in the lunch that can kind of, or maybe even as a teacher to kind of keep an eye on, is he finishing everything? Is he, you know, because one day he ordered a Caesar salad and I thought that was so bizarre that he ordered a Caesar salad. <laughs> he likes salads, but he doesn't necessarily like like the Parmesan cheese and the dressing. And so he was just eating the lettuce and then like something small on the side. And I'm like, that's not enough for you to eat, you know? So um, it's good if you have someone at school to talk to you who's there at lunch because you can't always be there to kind of give you some feedback on, 
what is is he eating okay? Do I maybe need to just send his lunch? So you know, because at the end of the day, you can at least see what he's eaten when he brings mm -hmm. his lunch pail back home. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so for us, I I know a couple of the moms who work in the lunch room, and it's it's kind of good to to hear. And then of course, I communicate with him. You know, what did you like? What didn't you, What didn't you like? And did you eat, eat everything? And how hungry is he after school? Because mm -hmm. that's sometimes an indicator too. Yeah. yeah, Amy, I think that's really important is communicating with the people that are feeding your kid. It's mm -hmm. it's a huge thing because the kids are not really going to speak up for themselves when it comes to food necessarily. They just sort of push it aside. They're with their friends if they're not if they don't like something. But if they know that somebody is keeping an eye on them, that makes a big difference yeah. and that it's being reported back to mom especially. Yeah. Um, I'm very lucky in the school that my daughter's in that they're very health conscious with the menu. They've taken all red meats off of the menu. They've taken juice off the menu. It is uh, milk, water, you know, for beverages, and um, a lot of whole wheat products, a lot of vegetables, and it's great. It's it's nice to know that she's being exposed to a lot of different foods, and that carries over to when we come home as well. I talk about what did you have today. They um, they help them build their own sandwiches. They build their own chicken tacos. They do things like that. And just yesterday, she came home and she said, I, I ask her every day, what did you have for lunch? Even though I know what she had because it's on the menu. <laughs> but she yeah. doesn't know that. Yeah. And, um, and she said, oh, I had sweet potatoes. They were so good. And I almost fell out of my chair because she hasn't <laughs> eaten sweet potatoes since she was a baby. Right. And I said, well, what did you like about them? Well, I liked that they were orange. And that's fine. That right. works. Right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So yeah. it, it's really important to have that kind of communication. Um, they also write every day a little gram they send home letting us know how they ate. And she's pretty good. She eats pretty well at school. So I, I believe that has a lot to do with them being given good foods that taste good, that are prepared well, and that are healthy. They know they feel good afterwards. Like Desiree, like you were saying, your daughter felt terrible after eating fast yeah. food. And, and that's oh, you know, I think it's I, important that they know that they have something good. Yeah. I lost, I lost Stacy. Are you there, Desiree? Yeah, like, like, all the things. Oh, oh. She's coming in. And out. <laughs> you came in and out there, Stacy. But um, but yeah, oh, I, okay. I think you're right. I think um, uh, that's that's awesome that you get a report of what um, your your child is eating at yeah. at her school. And I wish I got some kind of report, but um, I. Yeah. I uh, try to keep in contact with people, and I, if they did this, just, I mean, you have the right to know what your kids are eating at school and if they're eating enough and and all that. So if you don't currently know, find out. You know, is there a because there's usually a lunch monitor that's usually a mom, it's just a volunteer, or it's it's a teacher or someone that you could communicate with and that can yeah, kind of just keep an eye on your kid mm -hmm. and um, kind of just keep tabs on if they're eating okay. Because you know, some days. They talk too much and they don't eat as much as they should. You know that's going to happen. I wouldn't expect every day that my kid's going to ha eat everything um, available or take a bite of everything. Um, but but yeah, I think it's just all about communication. And you know, most schools give you a menu that you know beforehand what they what they have to offer and 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 all that. So that's that's a really that's a good conversation. Um, Gretchen, uh, at her school, the mums take turns. I think it's like once every two or three months, the mums all bring in a snack for the entire school. It's a small school, so that it's not hundreds of children. <laughs> so every couple months, I bring in like a bag of apples and a bag of carrots and some hummus and some pita bread, and that goes to everyone. So I know that every that's for their morning snack. So we don't send a morning snack every day. It's provided by one of the mums. Yeah. Um, so I know that every morning she's getting a snack, and she even said to me the other day, Mom, I ate cucumber at school, because she hasn't, it's not one of her favorites that she wants yeah. to eat at home, and I was like, okay, good, cool. Yeah. Just adding new things into her diet, and I mean, it's something that Mom didn't give her, so maybe that's more exciting. Um, <laughs> exactly. It came from someone else's mom, that's way exactly. more fun. Exactly, yep. Um, but yeah, I do, I mean, I take a peek into her lunch bag every day after school, and sometimes she'll say, I want to eat this in the car, and sometimes... She's eaten everything, but there's, I mean, there's most days something comes back home, and then she just eats it on the ride home or when she gets home for a snack. Right, right, exactly. Um, another thing I just thought of is, you know, we, we're talking a lot about food, but, um, you know, how do you know that your kid's getting enough um, hydration, like water, you know? Because mm -hmm. I, I found that... Um, 
I feel like when, when, when kids drink from a water fountain, they don't drink as much as mm -hmm. if they had it like in a bottle. And yeah. um, do, does your school allow to bring like a water bottle every day so that, that they can drink from? Because that something that um, that Charlie's school allows and that I can kind of see too. How I much send a water bottle every day yeah. and she can refill it there if she wants. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, but that's I know that she drinks it for sure. Yeah, yeah, because that's something I think a lot, a lot of times that we forget is to mm -hmm. have them drink too, you know, because they're running and, you know, they're, they're, you know, just very active at school and mm -hmm. I don't know how many, you know, they might not get enough, when they get their break to drink, drinking out of water fountain is kind of hard. I don't know. Yeah, because yeah, you don't feel like you're getting as much. Yeah. Well, they I'm have always... sinks in the classrooms and cups for the kids to yeah, use and yeah. then wash, so it's a, it's a nice thing for them to do for themselves as well. It's just right, a skill. Right. Right. Um, so I think they all like doing that, so it encourages them to drink more because then they get to play in the sink a bit and watch their cup <laughs> in. <laughs> right, right, right. But, yeah, my, it's the same in my daughter's school too, that they have um, timeouts where they sit down and they fill up their cups and they drink out of the cup, and it's a relaxed moment <laughs> to yeah, sort of yeah. sit down and, and maybe have a snack at that point also. But when she's home on the weekends at night, I always try to do water breaks because on her own, she rarely will go and get water. I have to really put it right in front of her, right. saying now it's time, especially in the summer where you're yes. doing so much running around on the playgrounds. I always have a huge bottle of water with me. Yeah. And every I keep an eye. I literally set a timer on my phone, and every 10 minutes or so, time to take a water break. And it's it's so important because it affects so many different aspects of their behavior, of their sleeping, of their eating, their digesting. It's so important for them to be well hydrated. Um, I, my daughter drinks a lot of milk, and I try to really get as much water in there aside from that as possible right. because it's just so important for them on so many levels. Yeah, yeah I remember, I've kind of drilled it into my daughter's head yeah. so much that she will come right up to me and say, Mom, I need some water. I don't want to get dehydrated. Good. This is her <laughs> all day, every day. <laughs> doesn't want to be dehydrated. I don't know what she yeah. thinks. Dehydrated is, <laughs> she just, you will not but she doesn't want it. <laughs> she doesn't want it. Yeah, she doesn't when, want it yeah. when my when my kids were like three, Stacy's daughter's age, they they drank a lot of milk too. Like that was like yeah. all they drank, um, mm -hmm. and it was sort of hard to get water into their diet because. I don't know, guys. It has, doesn't have the the same great flavor as milk. I don't know. Or it's just kind of plain. Um, but now um, both of my kids are pretty good about drinking water. But I do have to remind my, especially my youngest, and even me. You know, I don't think I drink enough water because you know you get really busy and you don't think about yeah. it until like yeah. it's way too late and you get like a horrible headache or you just get fatigued. You know. Yeah. So. My That's partner's always reminding me to drink water because I'm the worst yeah. for it. I am the worst. I all day and forget that I haven't had it. I know, I know, I know. Well, I mean, Amy, to your point about the water, what's really great, especially what kids love again, is you can slice a lemon wedge and stick it in the water bottle or a strawberry, slice up some strawberries. Even a mint sprig, which is wonderful to put into water, it makes it really refreshing. Yeah. And that's a great way to get kids to drink their water because it's yeah. something different and exciting to have a lemon floating around in their water yeah, you know, in exactly. their cup. And, and they, they think that they're not just having water now, they're having something a little more special. Yeah, so that's a great way yeah. to do it. Also, I have um, I just recently got one of those um, big jugs that has a spout on it to to mm -hmm. put in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. um, that if I can put anything in that, they love to drink it just because they like to pour it themselves. Yes, <laughs> and so <laughs> even if I put water in there, you know, it's just water, but it's cold and it's ready. You know, they use that little spigot and they just think that that's like I don't know, like they end up drinking more that way than if they took it out of the tap. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Just it's just one of those things. And oh another God, thing I wanted to try, um, so I'm having some from some friends over this weekend. It was sort of a spring party, is to make ice cubes with frozen yep. fruit in it. I'm just gonna say that, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think my kids will think that's fun too. Um, Absolutely, it's nutritious yeah. Yeah. and it's an easy way to flavor the water. It's good yeah. for them. And it's not just juice because they're still getting the fruit itself. It's pureed right. fruit, so they're getting the fiber. They're getting all the good parts of the fruit in there as well. So it's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. So I'm excited to try that. I think that they'll get a kick out of that. Um, okay, awesome. Well, that that covers a lot. And um, let's go to our our last question. I'm just going to check to make sure we didn't get any others. It looks like. Looks like people are watching, but everyone's being very quiet today. <laughs> or because we're just answering everything so perfectly. That's why. <laughs> okay. Um, here is our last question. We can kind of elaborate on this. Um, 
and, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit, but great ideas for what to pack in a school lunch. What, like when you pack a school lunch for your kids, what do you put in it? Like what are your go-to that you know that your kids are going to eat, but you know that are nutritious? Uh, Gretchen's big on a sandwich with meat and mustard. That is what she wants every single day. Um, <laughs> yeah. Some days I'll do soup or a pasta in her thermos. Um, we are, well, pretty much all the schools around here are peanut free, right? So you can't, mm -hmm. and that is something she would eat every single day. So peanut butter yeah. is usually a breakfast thing or an after school thing yeah. because it does have that kick of protein and I'm happy yeah. to have it, but she can't have it at school. Right. Um, so yeah. other things we do are uh, grapes or cut up fruit, anything that's easy for her to eat while chatting with her friends because I'm sure that they all eat together and, yeah. and talk. Yeah. Um, and sometimes like applesauce or yogurt or what else do we send? Just little things, things that are really easy for her to eat, things that don't need much. I don't know. I, I rarely send a whole apple, and when I do, it comes home sort of half eaten. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. So she's sure, like, yeah. because I haven't really mastered the lemon juice and the keeping Yeah, I know. Same thing with me, too. I know. I try to get small apples, so I know that he'll eat yeah. most of it. Um, but yeah, I, I get the same thing, and it's like not what you want to find in the. But it's there all day. Sometimes I'll like, send oh. a bag with it, and I'm like, put the apple in the bag. Yeah. I'll cut it in half when we get home. It's fine. Um, yeah. But yeah, just like crackers and things, but making sure it's not stuff full of sugar. And she'll say to me sometimes, what did she say the one day? Her friend had some dessert, something that I would never buy, like a snack cake or a, yeah. some kind of yeah. whatever. Um, and she said, my friend said he will rescue me from you because you didn't send a dessert. <laughs> <laughs> rescue you, that's a bit extreme. <laughs> I'd like to send you those things because you don't need a bunch of sugar in the middle of your day. I can send something that's like dessert, but I'm not going to send you cake. Yeah, um, yeah, I know, I know. So I mean, yeah. we'll do the fruit to go, um, yeah. something that's a little bit sweet and that feels like a bit of a treat, but mm -hmm. I don't send a fruit by the foot or some crummy, yeah. snacky type yeah, thing. Yeah. Because what, what is the point? That's just and, you know, if you want to, if, But if you want to do something like that, you could make that stuff yourself, yeah. too, and make it with ingredients that you know you know exactly what's in it that's not a processed yeah. or a lot of right. sugar. Because I know that they make, like, you can make it like those natural, like, fruit bark, you know, that's yeah. sort of like those that are already prepackaged. And so, um, you know, that's always an option. Of course, it's an extra step. It's a little bit more work, but you know what your kids are eating. Yeah, for um, sure. For me, I like to, if I know that I'm going to be making his lunch for, for most of the week, because he kind of goes off and on, I like to go ahead and dissect some things pre beforehand. So I get the little baggies, and I'll do like a few little baggies of pretzels and a few little baggies mm -hmm. of grapes and have it already so that in the mornings I can just basically just throw it in. And the yeah. same thing, he, he, our, our school is not totally peanut free, so he does take a peanut butter sandwich. Um, that's the only sandwich he, I mean, he likes ham sandwiches once in a while, but he loves peanut butter sandwich. And so I could make a few of those beforehand and put them in yeah. the refrigerator and just plop them all in. And then yeah. he's got his water bottle. And because I'm all about easy in the morning, because morning is not my favorite time of day. Yeah. I'm not quite there. I'm not yeah. quite all there. And well, so, we live far from Gretchen's school, so I have to be at the door fairly early in the morning. And it's, yeah. it's, I, Almost, I 99% of the time make her lunch the night before because it's yeah. just not something I want to yeah. do in that hour of getting ready. No. I no, no. would rather drink a coffee, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Stacy? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot of what we had said earlier. It's the same as the snacks. You want things that are easy for them to eat so that they want to eat it. Sliced cucumbers, a dip to go with it, the carrot sticks. Um, again, soy butter being a great alternative for the peanut-free schools. They can have that and have their peanut butter and jelly that way. Um, there's so many, and, and Amy, what you were saying about having it prepackaged in the uh, Ziplocs already is a great way to go and let them pick what they want for lunch that day. Let, maybe they want uh, bananas with soy butter, maybe they want, you know, something. I think the most important thing, though, is 
things that are going to fill them up in the right way. So you want proteins, you want fiber, you want things like that so that they're not reaching for the junk food after they've, they've finished their meal. They're not looking at what their friends are eating, if they have junk and saying, oh, I wish I had that, because yeah. they don't need it. They're moving on to now going outside and playing after lunch um, and having the energy to do that. And I think that's really the most important thing is just making sure that they're filled up with the right kinds of foods. And there's so many great options out there for that. Again, grapes and all sorts of fruits, they, they really do maintain themselves throughout the day so that they when it gets comes to lunchtime, it's not a mess in their lunch box. Yeah. Um, and really great things like that. But certainly the protein and the fiber are, are huge components of their lunch every day. They really should be part of it. Yeah. And we talked we've talked a lot about lunches and after school snacks, but what about before you send your kids to school? You know um, how important that is. You know, they they always you always hear that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Absolutely. I, I think you know <clears throat> all meals are pretty important, but that is the one where you know the, you're sort of setting up their day yep. by you're setting the tone and everything by what you are giving them. What what do you what do you guys tend to give your kids in the morning before you head them out to school? Well, my daughter has recently discovered oatmeal, surprisingly. Yeah. I had tried many times in the past to give it to her, but I found an oatmeal that has flax in it, and it really seems to to meet whatever it is that she was looking for in her oatmeal, yeah. I guess. Right. So I get some fresh fruit in there, and the flax really helps, and it's extra nutritious, and I think that that's also a really great thing to do for all the meals, is sneaking something in there that's more new, maybe nothing that they would normally grab. Like I, she's never going to say to me, "Mom, can I have some flax?" But certainly, <laughs> yeah. you know, certainly putting it into the meal in some way where they don't even know that that's what they're eating and they're getting that extra nutrition is just going to help fill up her stomach that much more when she gets to school. You know, she's filled and ready to go until the first snack break. But uh, we do fresh fruit every single morning. I let her choose her fruit. I try to vary it. She always has blueberries. She always has honeydew. Uh, she loves strawberries. I try to cut them into hearts. I cut them into rings. Again, it comes down to making it fun and exciting yeah. and um, and giving her options. Whole wheat toast is great. I just started getting the flavored cream cheeses. She really enjoys that. And just keeping, um, keeping it different, gi giving them a variety of things to choose from so that it, when you suggest something and they're not in the mood for it, you have five yeah. other things in your arsenal that you can yes. say, well, how about? And then and also continually introducing new things. Like I said, the oatmeal came out of nowhere. I just tried it one day, and she yeah. loved it. So nice. yogurt is another great thing for breakfast. Again, getting the, the good nutrition in them very early on is so important. Yeah, um, oatmeal is huge in our house, too. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like our go-to. And what I love about it is it stays with them for a long time so yeah it, it can easily stay with them until lunchtime and yeah. I don't know there's something about eating something warm in in the morning too mm -hmm. that just helps yeah, wake you up like yeah. yeah sometimes my team he like he really loves cold cereal and so I have to I try to buy the, the healthiest kind I can you know something with fruits like dried fruits and nuts in it which right. he luckily he loves Good. Um, but I don't know. There's something about eating something warm. I think that kind of just I don't know helps wake you up and gets you going. And that that we always tend to go to oatmeal. And like Stacy said, you could put in fresh fruit into the oatmeal, um, nuts, raisins, you know, anything like that. So mm -hmm. it's it's a very versatile food that you could put lots of healthy things into, and it yeah. still tastes really good. Yeah, oatmeal has been a big one. She's off it right now, but like. During the the depths of winter, we eat yeah. a lot of oatmeal because yeah. we want to warm up. Yeah. Um, and I put I'll put frozen fruit in it as it's cooking, and then it turns a delightful like pink or purple color. But yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. Right. That's a good idea. Um, yeah. I did pumpkin oatmeal, um, okay. which some people loved and some people were not so keen on. <laughs> but I really liked it. It was good. Yeah. Um, we just added some like pumpkin puree to it and that's cinnamon and nutmeg, yeah. yeah. and that was yeah. good. Um, and what else have we done? Nuts is another good one. She'll eat lots of nuts. And again, that's something I can't send to school. So it's mm -hmm. sort of yeah. like a, yeah. almonds and things. Almonds and dates are a fantastic yeah. combo because you get that sort of sweet, you think you're having yeah. a treat feeling. Yes. Um, and I mean, that's something she can have for breakfast anyways. Exactly. If I'm really on the ball, I make muffins and she'll do muffins for breakfast. But I'll be honest, that hasn't happened for couple months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like to think that I would make more, but um <laughs> but she would she'd like to have cereal 
and almond milk or something like that in the morning. Yeah. She'll often wake me up holding this massive bowl of cereal that she's <laughs> overfilled with milk beside my head in the morning. Mom, look, I made you breakfast. I'm like, okay, let's take that downstairs and <laughs> take it between a few bowls. Yeah. What yeah, about like, oh, I'm sorry, that was too much milk. That was too much, yeah. <laughs> What about smoothies? Do you, do your kids like smoothies? Because that's also a great way to sneak in some things. That Absolutely. They don't know. They, they, it tastes like a dessert, yeah. you know, so they don't know. Yeah, my daughter loves smoothies, and I always, when she, not that when she's not looking because she loves avocado, but yeah. I put the avocado in the smoothie, and it actually yeah. makes it, I think it makes it taste better. And it's a great way to, again, add some good fats, add some extra nutrition in there, and they just love it. It's not... I, I don't serve it to her as a meal replacement necessarily. I won't give it to her strictly as breakfast, but certainly as a snack in between meals. It's a great yes. thing to have. Um, and the other thing, too, that I forgot about with breakfast is I don't have time during the week, but on the weekends, we'll make eggs. And I'll always try to get as many vegetables into the eggs as possible. Yeah. Again, yeah. cheese. Cheese is a great thing for them. So. I get some cheese in there, and it's such a hearty meal to give them while also being very nutritious. So that's a great one. But the smoothies are fun. You can really put so many, so many great yeah. different things in there, and you don't even need to add a sweetener once you have all the no. fruits in there. So it's it's great. Yeah, I, I think you know with with the warmer temperatures hopefully coming soon. <laughs> let's hope. Um, <laughs> Smoothies, like you know, we love to have smoothies in the summer, and like you said, sort of like if an in between snack. Mm -hmm. That um, you know you're getting calcium if you're putting in like almond milk or coconut milk or something like that. Or yogurt, and you can do yogurt. yogurt too. Yeah. yeah, I do a little bit of yogurt and coconut milk is my favorite. And mm -hmm. just I just put in frozen fruit and um, like you said, you could put in avocado or you know, a lot of people put in kale and mm -hmm. things like that just as an extra. And then you could also put protein into it if you wanted to add a little protein to you know get that. Because if you like you said, if you if you're not getting enough protein and you're j drinking a lot of smoothies, you're missing that. So you can add that in. Sure. Um, we'll so, do a peanut butter and banana one, which is a pretty big oh, right. excellent. Yes. I, mean, I mean that's like dessert, <laughs> yeah. you know, but 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 so much better for you. Yeah. I love it. Um, I remember once I did. This isn't a smoothie, but I was just thinking of desserts when I'm trying to be good and not and stay away from like ice cream and things. I took a yeah. I took a banana and and the kids like this too. I just took a banana, I cut it in half, and so laid it in two halves, and heated it heated it up in the microwave for like ten seconds just so it was a little bit soft. Mm -hmm. It put a little bit of cinnamon mm -hmm. on it and a little bit of yogurt, and that's all I did. Oh, and peanut I did a little bit of peanut butter, and mm -hmm. it was good. so good. It tasted like. I don't know, like somehow it was very decadent. It, I guess because banana has that great texture. Yeah. You think that you're having something bad for you, but yeah. you're getting a lot of good stuff. I mean, if you ate, ate a million bananas, it probably wouldn't be, you know, good for your digestive system. But um, it, it, I don't know. It was just you, you forget that sometimes your the things in nature can be so decadent and delicious, yeah. you know, so... And what and what you added in with the cinnamon is a great thing. I think introducing yeah. kids to spices yeah. is a wonderful way to get them interested. Um, again, on vegetables, rosemary is so great with so many roasted vegetables, and it's uh, fun for them to again participate in adding the spice, the seasoning that they that they find interesting. And yeah. you can change any meal. Something that they didn't like before is a completely different meal with just one extra ingredient. So exactly. you could do so many different things with things like that. You can make a, a vanilla smoothie, a cinnamon smoothie. Smoothie. You could do um, all the different extracts that there are. You could change the flavor of coconut extract. So many different things that you could put in and just change it completely. And it's, yeah. you could have something different every day just with one different ingredient. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a whole huge Pinterest board of smoothie recipes. <laughs> There's so many that I want to try. So many that I want to try. And I agree, like getting, getting your kids involved and making something fun like a smoothie is, um, oh, they're more likely to have it. And try mm -hmm. it and try new things and like you said you could just put in one new ingredient like cinnamon and it could completely change the flavor absolutely yeah. yeah and you know cooking with your kids is also a great you know educational thing to do yep and mm -hmm. they learn a lot that way too so Gretchen loves she's always loved helping in the kitchen I have pictures oh, yeah. of her from as soon as she could stand she was helping in the kitchen she now she has her little cupcake apron that she wears yeah. and she loves it. <laughs> They really do, and I mean, yeah. even though it, it makes the it, it, it granted it makes the process much longer and slower when your kids get involved. I mean, it just does. Yeah. But I mean, if who cares, you know? I mean, it's 
it's fun for them and it's just a great learning lesson lesson for them. It introduces them to new foods mm -hmm. and yeah. um, I don't know. I like well, something like that. Stand there and watch, right? Yeah, like they don't... yeah, exactly. Just stand there and watch. Maybe dump in yeah. one thing and that's and yeah. they and they just like to do that. And it's te it's teaching them about cooking. You know, it's teaching them life skills and it's just there's a lot of great things with having your kids in the kitchen with you. Yeah, yeah. at uh, my great. daughter's school last summer, they they every once in a while they'll do a class party on their own where they ask people, parents, to bring in certain foods for the party. So they were doing a rainbow party and they put on the chart outside the door a color of the rainbow mm. and the food that they want you to bring in. And I was appalled because it was something like for red they had Doritos, for orange they had cheese oh, doodles, no. for yellow they had potato chips. And I spoke with the teacher very nicely and I yeah. said, you know, fruits are all those colors. Like, yeah, no yeah exactly. So I ended up crossing out the potato chips next to yellow and put bananas and next yeah. to purple I put grapes <laughs> and ended up bringing in a bunch of fruits and they all participated in making fruit salad together oh, and the teacher told me afterwards they loved it. They all ate the fruit salad and now anytime they have the sign up chart outside the class my daughter always says can we bring the bananas like she's really yeah, into it because yeah. she knows that it was very hands on as opposed to just eating you know, a, a crunchy orange cheese doodle, which we all know everybody loves. There's nothing, you know, no, right, right, right. we all understand how enjoyable that can be as well. But to really teach them the right lessons and to do the rainbow of colors and nutrition and things like that and getting them involved in the cooking, something as simple as a fruit salad could be so enjoyable. And again, changing up the fruits every time, kiwi, blueberries, so many different ways of, you know, make it a, a task to find every color of the rainbow and, and put it in the fruit salad and make it a game. There, there's so many great ways to teach them the right things to choose. Right. Well, good for you for um, approaching the oh. teacher and changing that. <laughs> it was know, a little like, ridiculous. Yeah. I would have been appalled. That's <laughs> I know. Yeah, it was, it was tough. <laughs> well, I mean, that's usually what you see uh, when, you, when you go to children's parties. I've just noticed from experience that you do see a lot of Snacky foods, and you know, like Stacy said earlier, once in a while, you know, that's not going to hurt you to right. indulge in mm -hmm. some of those like not so good for you foods. But um, you know, if it's something that they're doing on the ongoing basis, there's no reason yeah. why, like you said, fruits come in every single color you can imagine, and vegetables do as well. Sure. And it's a great, it's also a great opportunity to teach the kids what each of these, like, pick, you know, pick up a fruit and have them guess what it is. What, what is this? And right. What kind of vitamins does this fruit have? Why right. is this fruit good for you? Right. These carrots are good for your eyes. I mean, exactly. that, that would be great for, for children to, and I think it would be a fun game for them too, you know? So, mm -hmm. yep. um, I don't know, it just opens up a lot of opportunities there. So, Absolutely. good for you for standing up for, for yeah. your kids' health. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well... I think that we are getting pretty close to finishing our hour here. It's gone by really, really fast. It always does. Yeah. Um, but I think that we have we shared a lot of great tips, and um, I feel kind of excited now to to make my my ice cubes with the with the fruit in it. I can't wait to make those this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that if you boil the water first, then the ice will freeze less cloudy. Oh, I haven't really? tried it, okay. but I Pinterest tells you these things. Um, but yeah, I remember seeing someone do that, and they said that if you boil it, then it doesn't have that like cloudy. Okay, so if it's too cloudy, then you want to be able to tell really what's in what's yeah. the fruit. This is, is more of an aesthetic thing. I don't think it's gonna make. But I uh, know, but still, but like I want I want everyone yeah. to see the fruit, you know, especially yeah. my kids, because I want them to know. Because I thought, you know, if I made like a, I wanted to make like a homemade lemonade, you know, and maybe get some blueberry ice cubes. I think that'd be so good. Or strawberry. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. So, um, anyway, I can't wait to try that. I'll have to, I'll probably be writing a blog post about that. So, I'll have to <laughs> share that. Um, but um, I wanted to thank you, Stacy, for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. This was wonderful. I enjoyed it. Awesome. And um, I want to also thank our sponsor for the hour, which is Puritan's Pride. And um, you can visit them at Puritan.com. And um, we appreciate you joining us today and look for a new show next week, um, probably at a regular time, Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for joining us, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.